talking about what it means to have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. When you know how much God loves you, you can get in the mix and take on any challenge life throws your way. I'm pretty confident this week will be the best one yet, mainly because I get to hit things with this mallet. I don't know if it's the same for you, but smacking things with a mallet is sometimes exactly what I need to do to relieve some stress. That one level you can't pass on geometry dash getting you down? Smack something with a mallet. Your friends got together without you? Mallet time! Your brother ate the last of the golden double stuff Oreos? You know what you need to do. Mallet! Now, I don't recommend smacking people with the mallet. That would be bad. Actually, the things you can smack are pretty limited. But I just so happen to have one such item right here that is totally mallet smack acceptable. Meet Clyde. Now Clyde is just a normal chicken doing normal chicken things, working a chicken job, trying to make ends meet and provide for his chicken family. But one thing that Clyde does really well is take a smack with a mallet. He can take a smack and keep on clucking. Take a listen. Clyde, my man, taking it like a champ. Another thing you might not know is that Clyde has some brothers and sisters. Four of them, in fact. Their names are Clara, Clancy, Clementine, and Dave. And Clyde taught them all how to take a smack with a mallet. Let's try. <laughs> Tell you what, let's turn this into a game, shall we? I call it Squawk That Tune. I'll play a tune by smacking these chickens. It will be up to these two contestants 
to guess what it is. I'll start easy and work out to more difficult tunes. All right, Julie, Steven, are you guys ready? Yes. I think so. All right, here is song number one. Twinkle, twinkle, little star? Yes! Yeah! Job. All right, are you guys ready for song number two? I speak fluent chicken. Okay, <laughs> song number two. Here we go. The Macarena? <laughs> um, Julia, I guess it's <laughs> Baba Black Sheep? No, nope. no. Nope. Here, I'll play it one more time. Here we go. <laughs> the Nintendo theme song? Is it Jingle Bells? I have no clue. No! It's Baby Shark! Oh. That was so clearly Baby Shark. Baby, Did you guys get that? That was Baby Shark. Yeah, exactly. I heard dun 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 Okay, it's clearly Baby Shark. Do we have another song? All right, last song. Are you guys ready? Maybe. All right, here we go. Jingle all the way. We will rock you! Yes! Yeah! That one was easy. All right, nice job, good, that was fun. High five. COVID friendly. <laughs> All right, that was a fun game and I feel way less stressed. It's a win-win. Let's give a hand for our guessers, they're amazing. And can we also thank Clyde and his family? I'm feeling the rhythm, how about you? Good, let's keep it going as we sing, dance, and worship God together. Go ahead and stand up. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, we know we belong here because of your love from us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we We know we belong here because of your love for us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. Your there will always be together. So sing along with me for all the joy he brings. It's going down. Get in the mix. We're not stopping. Get in the mix.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Judges, chapters 6 through 8. As many times before, the Israelites turned away from God. He allowed the Midianites to take over their land. God's people hid out in caves. When they tried to grow plants or tend to livestock, the Midianites would show up and destroy their crops and animals. At last, the Israelites cried out to God for help. He heard them and sent the angel of the Lord to a man named Gideon, who was threshing grain in a wine press. Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. All Gideon could do for a moment was stop and stare. Uh, pardon me, sir, you, you said the Lord is with us? Then why has all this happened? The, the Lord has deserted us. You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My family is the weakest in the tribe, and I'm the least important member. I will be with you. Even with a direct message from the Lord, Gideon was still nervous about the whole thing. Uh, give me a special sign, then I'll know it's really you talking to me. So God gave Gideon a sign, sending fire to burn up meat and bread. God's spirit was with Gideon, and when the Midianites and the Amalekites gathered to attack, Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelites to follow him. But even as the army gathered, Gideon once again pleaded to God for another sign. God responded by letting dew fall on a fleece, and then on the next day, only on the ground surrounding it. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. At last, Gideon was convinced God wanted to use him. He camped with 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. Here, God spoke again. I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men. Too many? Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. Announce to the army, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Gideon did just as the Lord instructed. There, Lord, 22,000 men have gone home. <laughs> Only 10,000 left to fight. There are still too many men. Have you seen the Midianite army? Take the men down to the water. There, I will reduce the number of them for you. Even though it must have worried Gideon to lose more of his army, he did just as the Lord said. Field trip to the lake, everyone. At the water's edge, the Lord said, Some men will drink the way dogs do. They will lap up the water with their tongues. Separate them from those who get down on their knees to drink. Gideon watched carefully. Most men got on their knees and drank directly from the water, but 300 men cupped the water in their hands and lifted them to their mouths to lap. So, God, I send those 300 men home and keep the other 9,700, right? With the help of the 300 men who lapped up the water, I will save you. Let all the other men go home. Oh, um, okay. Yes. Gideon sent home every single person in the army except those 300 men. Get some sleep. Tomorrow we will figure out what's next. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon once more. Get up. What? Oh, uh, I'm awake. Gideon stumbled out of his tent. Below, the campfires and torches of the enemy armies covered the entire valley. So many. Like, like a swarm of locusts. Go down to the camp. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack. Wondering if he might be dreaming, Gideon snuck down the mountain to hover in the shadows at the edge of the camp. He could hear voices from a nearby tent. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp. It hit the tent with great force and knocked it flat. Wow, but that can only be the sword of Gideon from Israel. 
God has given him the whole camp. Gideon listened in shock. Wow, God, thank you. At once, Gideon scrambled back up the hill to the Israelite camp. Get up, get up. The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. Quickly, Gideon separated the 300 men into three groups and handed each one a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch inside. Watch me, do what I do. I'll go to the edge of the enemy camp. Then we'll blow our trumpets from all around the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and his men headed quietly down the slope, fanning out in groups to surround the vast enemy camp. Okay, get ready. As soon as Gideon sounded his trumpet, he smashed his jar so the torch shone brightly. The other 300 men did the same. For the Lord! A sword the Lord! The Israelites held their ground, but their enemies panicked, confused by the trumpets and bright lights that pierced the dark night. They're coming from everywhere! The enemy armies were so confused, they began to fight each other, and then they fled in fear. After the men, Gideon and the Israelites chased their enemies all the way to the Jordan River and beyond until all the enemy armies were destroyed. The Israelites begged Gideon to rule over them. I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yep, Gideon was an underdog, filled with doubt, but he still chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. Amazing story. You know, Gideon and the Israelites only needed jars, torches, and trumpets to win the battle because God was always in control. I wonder what a mallet in my hands could do. Perhaps I be could become the greatest chicken musician the whole world has ever known. Just kidding. Kids, Gideon wasn't sure he was the right guy for the job, but God used him to do big things. God can do big things through us too, even when we sometimes don't feel ready. Gideon trusted God, and we can too. We can trust God no matter what. No matter what's going on around you, no matter how small or uncertain you might feel, God can use you no matter what. God used ordinary people to do big things all throughout the Bible. Think about how Jesus chose regular people to be his closest friends, the disciples. Then they changed the world by telling everyone about him. God can work through any of us if we have the courage to trust him and follow his plan for our lives.